Hi and welcome to Light Maria from Cambridge. Today I'm going to give you six tips that will give you success at GCSE Literature. Six things that will set you apart from your competitors. And just to give you a quick secret, it's not all about learning quotes, though they are quite important. Okay, so these are the six things that the best students do for GCSE Literature. Number one, read the last chapter, the last scene or the last poem in the anthology. Often weaker students don't do this, they don't get round to this. Go to the end of your text and look at key details about what is happening, how characters respond and pick out some good quotes and some good references. This is particularly important in complex texts such as Jekyll and Hyde. The last chapter is really quite difficult. It requires quite a lot of study, but it will really help you interpret the rest of the text. So tip one, go to the end and work backwards. Tip two, I'm going to say no eight passages of any text that you're studying, no matter how it is examined. Choose eight passages that you know really, really well and try and make these diverse passages. Now, you'll have had some help from your teacher with this because your teacher will have said, concentrate on this one, this one, this scene. So you need to have eight that you know really well. Make sure they're really diverse. So in a play, for example, one might be dialogue, one might be soliloquy, one might be an outside setting versus an inside setting. One might be a moment of great drama and death and tragedy. Another one might be a much more intimate scene. So whatever it is, mix it up. Know eight passages really, really well and you'll be well on your way. This is about driving into detail rather than generalised kind of fuzzy passages. But make sure that you learn them in chronological order so you know where they are and they're spread throughout your text. Number three, look for imagery and big patterns in your text. So in Macbeth, for example, it might be blood, Jekyll and Hyde, it might be sickness, it might be patterns to do with the weather, it might be patterns of characters interacting with each other and how their relationship deteriorates. Look for key imagery and patterns in the text and make lists of these to learn so that you know when you're talking about a certain topic, you can go to all of the imagery. It might be about trees or nature or birds, whatever it is, have them fixed, but not just going in for one. Think about the big picture. Number four, know which texts require context. You can find this out by looking at the assessment objectives in the exam specifications. Some texts require you to know about context, others don't. Make sure you go into the exam knowing in your head which ones do. When you know that, learn the context. But don't learn when Shakespeare's birthday is or what his mother was called and write that in your essay. We don't need to know that. But we might need to know, for example, that the king, James I, who was king when Shakespeare was writing, was very interested in witches and wrote a book about them. So for Jekyll and Hyde, for example, you might want to know that the medical world was not perhaps as squeaky clean as it should have been and there were concerns about doctors experimenting on corpses and doing their own perhaps rather maybe even illegal experiments. So you might want to know a little bit about that. So remember, think carefully about which context you're going to bother learning and how you would apply it and only learn it if you know how you can apply it. Number five, and I can't recommend this enough, is have opinions. Have some overarching responses to the text that you feel sure about. Now, of course, you're going to do lots of little essay plans on different topics, but don't rely on these. The key is flexibility of thinking and having done the big thinking before you go into the exam. So, for example, you might have a topic about presentation of women in Priestley's play and Inspector Calls. You might have some ideas about women, but you need to have a whole view. 
So for example, on the one hand, Priestley presents women as vulnerable and as perhaps rather selfish and arrogant in Mrs. Burling's case and rather selfish in Sheila's case. However, you want to step back and think, well, what is he saying about women in general? What is his view in women and what do I take away from this? So having opinions on the text is really important. You should also make sure that you have this on each poem in the anthology. Number six, can't emphasize this enough. An excellent student will know the examiner's mindset. And the way you find that out is going to the mark scheme. So whatever exam board it is, go up to the mark schemes. You can click the button and see what the answer is for the question. There should be exemplar material as well, but go to the mark schemes and you will see that the examiner has detailed out what it is they are expecting and what would be good to find in a top grade essay. Okay, so there you have Maria's six things that the best students do in English literature. Please hit that like button and subscribe.